All right, what is up internet? I'm Jay Bradway. Welcome back to my music production channel. In today's video, I'm gonna show you three different ways to sidechain with an FL Studio. Now I want you to keep in mind there is no right or wrong way to sidechain. However, there are more effective ways to sidechain based off what it is you're trying to do. So anyways, I hope you guys get some value out of this video and let's hop straight into the tutorial. Okay, so I got this little beat that I was working on yesterday. Right now there is currently no sidechaining. This is what we got here. Okay, so it sounds kind of cool, but right now the kick is kind of buried underneath the synths, you know, and once we side chain this, the kick will stand out a lot more and it'll just hit a lot harder. Okay, so this first method is going to be using the P controller. You want to make sure that you guys have your sounds routed into the mixer. So I got my kick here and then I have my synths right here, which are routed into this channel, right? I'm going to go to the kick here and I'm going to right click and search for P controller um, and make sure this mute button is unchecked. Now, if I solve the kick and I play it, you can see the signal is here, okay? It's coming through. And notice how I can adjust this signal by uh, messing with the volume. I can turn it up, you know? I can change the delay by uh, bringing up the delay. I can turn down the delay. And now you can see that it's taking longer for the signal to reset, you know? Your tension knob essentially works as a multiplier for the volume. So um, if I turn the tension up all the way, it's multiplying the signal. If I turn it down, it's minimizing it. And then last but not least, we have this bass knob right here. And we can change where we want uh, basically the signal to start using the bass. Okay, so why am I telling you all this? Uh, because these are the knobs that we will use to side chain the kick to the synths. So we're gonna go over to the synth section here. We're gonna go to the slots and search for uh, balancer, okay? Okay, now that we got the balancer up, we're gonna right click on the volume here. We're gonna do link to controller and we're going to select the P controller right here and click accept. Okay, so now um, these two are linked together. However, there is gonna be an issue that I want you guys to be aware of. So right now, nothing is happening, but that's because our volume is down. If we turn up our volume, now we can see that it's actually affecting the volume in our fruity balancer. However, uh, the opposite effect is happening right now. We want the volume to turn down every single time the kick hits, not turn up. So the way that we can fix that is we can right click here, we can go to link to controller, and then under mapping formula, we switch that to inverted. And now we get the desired effect. But now we've run into another issue here, and that's that the volume is starting at a base of 5.6 decibels, and we don't want that. We want it to start at zero decibels right here. So the way that we can do that, there's two different ways we can do that. We can just mess around with the base knob right here, and then we can tweak this until it says zero dB, okay? Another way you can do this is you can just right click, do type in value, and you can put in 0.2. So now it's gonna start at zero decibels, and we're getting that side chaining effect there. Another thing we can do is we could actually just turn down the bass all the way, right click, uh, link to controller, and in the mapping formula here, we can actually just add in a formula, tell the controller to start at the desired position. So in the mapping formula, I'm gonna type min, I'm gonna do open parentheses, I'm gonna click to the end here, hit a comma, and type in 0 0.8, which is the default value for the Fruity Balancer. Now, if I click uh, enter here, you can see that the graph actually changes um, to show that it, it did compile correctly. And now if we click accept and then play it, you can see that it is starting here at the default position. Now, I know this is a little bit overkill, um, especially for side chaining, but this is just a cool little thing to keep in mind or to know because this comes in handy, especially if you're doing like advanced automation or sound design. But uh, we can edit that formula to whatever we want. So if we want to start at like 0.5 here, then we can just click accept there and it's gonna start there. So we don't even need to touch the base knob really. Okay, with all that being said, now that we have it linked properly and it's starting in the correct position, that's when you can come in here and mess around with the volume, the tension, and the decay knobs to fine tune the mix of the side chain. So that's completely up to you guys. You go and do whatever sounds best to you. All right, next we're gonna go into the second way to side chain, which is using the fruity limiter. So let's hop right into it. Okay, so once again, make sure you guys have your sounds and your kicks uh, routed to the mixing channel here. Uh, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select the kick and remember we wanna side chain the kick to our synths. So when I have the kick selected, I'm gonna go to the synth channel, go all the way down to the bottom here, right click this arrow and I'm gonna do side chain to this track. And what you'll get is this little knob here that is turned down all the way, okay? But actually a faster way to do this is to just hold shift and then click that arrow and then it'll automatically sidechain it for you there. 
Okay, next I'm going to click our synth channel here and I'm going to uh, open up a limiter. Okay, uh, we don't care about the limit section. We're going to click over to the compression section under side chain, right click, and then you're going to click kick there. Okay. But by default, there is no side chaining that actually takes place yet. Uh, what we're going to do, though, is we're going to bring down the threshold all the way and then turn up the ratio a little bit. And now we actually have side chaining. Although it does sound pretty terrible, the way that you get it to not sound terrible is um, we're going to bring down the release here. And then maybe we can turn down the ratio amount so the side chain isn't as extreme. Again, you just want to edit these knobs to your own taste. There's no right way, no wrong way. It's ultimately up to you. But one thing I am going to show you guys is a little trick to mix in your side chain a bit better, okay? Because to be honest with you, this just doesn't really sound that good. And there's a more effective way to achieve better results. And uh, that's using ghost channels. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click and go to my kick channel here. And I'm going to search for a percussive sound, something preferably that has a very quick transient. So something like this, this is perfect. This would be an example of something that you wouldn't want because it has a little bit of a reverb, it has a little bit of a tail. This is another example of something that you wouldn't want. This cowbell tap, it's very good. It's very short, quick. Something like this would also be very good because it's nice and quick. But anyways, I'm gonna take this cowbell tap and I'm gonna drag it underneath the kick here. Uh, next, I'm gonna right click on the plus button here and I'm gonna search for layer. Okay, now holding Alt on my keyboard and using the up arrow key, I'm gonna move this to above the kick, okay? Next, I'm gonna select the kick and the, bell, the cowbell tap, click layer, and then click set children. So now, every single time I hit a note on the layer, it's going to trigger both the kick and the cowbell tap. Next, I'm gonna rename the cowbell tap to sidechain, and then we're going to hit Control L to link it right next to the kick. And just for aesthetic reasons, we're going to give it a different color. Back to the channel rack here, I'm going to do control X to the kick and paste that into the layer. Okay, so once again, the kick and the cowbell are playing at the same time and we don't want that. So uh, to fix that, we're going to go back to our mixer channel here. I'm going to select the side chain here and in under master right here, I'm going to turn this down all the way, okay? And honestly, you can just click that arrow to completely disable it. And that's basically how you create a ghost channel. So now we're gonna do with the side chain, the same thing that we did with the kick. So with the side chain selected, I'm gonna hold shift and then click the arrow right here to side chain it to the synth. And then back in the fruity limiter here, uh, I'm gonna right click on side chain and I'm going to select side chain there. So now essentially we have that quick transient that is being side chained to our synths. And now this gives us a lot more flexibility to edit the character of the side chain. So I'm gonna turn up the ratio here. And now I'm going to uh, increase the release. And now that's sounding a lot better. So do you guys understand the benefits of using a ghost channel to sidechain your synths instead of the kick itself? Um, it just gives you more flexibility to edit the character of the sidechain. And ultimately it's just a, it's a good mixing trick. So now I can bring up the kick here. My kick is cutting through really nice. I can increase the ratio amount if I want a really hard, aggressive side chain. And then maybe reduce the release. So there you guys go. That's how to side chain with the Fruity Limiter. Also using a ghost channel. Super good stuff here. Next, I'm going to show you guys an even more advanced technique that combines both of the methods of using the P controller and also the ghost channel. So let's hop into that. Okay, so once again, make sure you guys have all your stuff routed here. I got my ghost channel set up here. Next, what I'm going to do is on our ghost channel, I'm going to add a P controller. Okay, and then on the synth channel, which is the channel that we want sidechain, I'm going to add uh, an EQ, parametric EQ. So now on the EQ here, I am going to go to this last band here um, and change it to that. So basically we get a high pass and then I am editing the, uh, the band order, setting that to four. So we get a nice steep slope here. Now you should see that we're getting a signal in the peak controller. I'm going to turn this up so we get more volume, increase the tension just like that. 
and now we're going to actually automate the um the band here to cut out the low frequencies every single time the the kick hits so instead of ducking the entire volume we're just going to cut out the lower frequencies which is ultimately like the frequencies that are competing for space with the kick the knob that we want to edit is this frequency knob right here so i'm going to right click this i'm going to do link to controller and then we're going to select the peak click accept and see how that looks okay so as you can see it's working it's just like super fast so we just got to uh decrease the delay or the decay rather see now we get that nice amount okay and once again we can use these knobs again to, to adjust the frequencies that we want to uh, manipulate so maybe we bring down the tension yeah that's good and maybe bring down the volume okay there we go so something like that and then i'm actually going to turn up the tension a little bit there we go something like that and let's maybe uh bring up the decay a little bit that's looking good turn up the volume a little bit okay now let's um hear it with the synths and everything and see how that sounds but there you guys go that is a more advanced way to sidechain uh just cutting out those lower frequencies instead of ducking the entire sound once again there's no right or wrong way to sidechain um there's going to be certain scenarios where you might want to just use a fruity limiter there's other scenarios where you might want to do this more advanced method you know it's completely up to you ultimately the goal is just be as creative as you can so you think of these as just different tools under your tool belt but anyways i hope you guys found value out of this video be sure to post a comment down below with the next tutorial you would like to see be sure to subscribe if you haven't already and I will see you guys next time. Peace out.